Good evening and welcome to Cross Crusaders Walk Through the Word and Exodus chapters 7 and 8, The Plagues of a Hardened Heart. In Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1, the Lord is giving command unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. He's saying to, to Moses, I have given you special status before Pharaoh, that Pharaoh may listen to what I have to say to him through you. And in chapter 4 of Exodus and verse 16, God is also speaking to Moses regarding Aaron, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall even be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. So whatever God has to say, he will give to Moses to relay to Aaron, and Moses and Aaron shall relay it to the people and to Pharaoh, to the Egyptians. We go to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. God is making a provision for his people. And in order for them to leave Egypt at this point, Things have to be pulled down. Things need to be different so that the people may leave Egypt and move forward and go into the promised land, the land that God promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, who is Israel. And in verse 2, Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. And Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. God is already, he knows that Pharaoh doesn't want to let the people go. He knows that Pharaoh's heart is hardened against God's will. And further, he will resist all that God will do to loosen his people from Egypt. We go back again to Exodus chapter 4 and verse 7. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 7, And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. He had been stricken and healed as a sign and a wonder. If we go on to verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? All these things, all these things can be used to show what God, who God is, and how he works in the people but pharaoh verse 4 but pharaoh shall not hearken unto you 
that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. He knows, God knows, that Pharaoh's not going to listen. And he is telling Moses that there will be great judgment upon the land of Egypt, that many things will happen. We go to Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10 and verse 11. Not so. Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. For that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Finally. Finally. But after much. They will leave Egypt. And in verse 5, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The children will, Israel will come out from Egypt. God has commanded. He's given, he's given them a land to go to. And in chapter 8 and verse 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end, that thou may knowest that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. God's people will not be affected by the plague that plagues Egypt. God's people are God's people. He wants to do them good and not evil. If we go to Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 4, God again is speaking, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon his host, upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And verse 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. God has a short-term plan, and he has a long-term plan regarding Pharaoh and the chariots of Egypt. If we go to the book of Psalms and Psalm chapter 9 and verse 16. Psalm chapter 9 and verse 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Hegayan, Selah. And if we go to Psalm 59, Psalm chapter 59 and verse 13. Psalm chapter 59 and verse 13. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob until the ends of the earth. Selah. And again in Psalm 83 and verse 18. Psalm 83 and verse 18 tells us, yet again, O my God, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. All of these judgments, all the things that God does, are that men may know that he is God, that he did create the world 
that he did create the universe, that he is in control, and he will take care of those who are his. Verse 6 of Exodus chapter 7. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spake unto Pharaoh. These were old men. Remember, we discussed earlier that when Moses left Egypt, he was 40. And he spent 40 years on the other side of the wilderness. So now he is fourscore, 80 years old, coming before Pharaoh, telling Pharaoh what God would have him to say. If we go on to Deuteronomy chapter 29, Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 5. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxen old upon the, thy foot. Forty years they wandered after Pharaoh let them go. And he's saying, your clothes are not old. Who wears anything today for more than a year, maybe two, before it's worn out? Forty years. The clothes and their shoes did not wear out. If we go to Deuteronomy 31 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 2. And he said unto them, Moses is speaking. He's speaking to the people. And he said unto them, I am an hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. A hundred and twenty years old. And Moses was still doing God's will. In verse 8 of chapter 7 of Exodus, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. This is something that God has commanded. God has enabled the sign to be the rod, the rod that Moses carries. Aaron cast down the rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. If we go to the book of Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 7, and verse 11. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. God is at telling someone to ask of him a sign, and he will give a sign. John chapter 6, Gospel of John chapter 6, and verse 30. John chapter 6 and verse 30. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? These are people challenging Christ to do a work, to do a miracle, do something that they would believe. They should believe God in any case. As Pharaoh who needs the sign, for his heart was hard. 
We pick up in verse 10 of chapter 7 of Exodus. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. And then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. They had something that they knew. They tried to do. They tried to duplicate what God had done. And they were able, in a way, to do this. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But God, God showed them what must be done. They cast down every man his rod. And they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. What Satan can do, what magicians and sorcerers believe they can do by their arcane arts, God wallowed them up. They could do nothing. They could do nothing but what God would have Aaron and Moses to do. And it took what God did, swallowed up what man could do. Go on to chapter 8 and verse 15. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 15. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. God knew exactly what was going to happen. Pharaoh's heart, Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuseth to let the people go. We go to Exodus chapter 10 and verse 1. Exodus chapter 10 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants that I might show these my signs before him. And if we drop down to verse 20 of Exodus chapter 10, verse 20 of Exodus chapter 10, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And verse 27 also of chapter 10, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. The hardness of Pharaoh's heart. But God still had a plan. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning, so he goeth out. Lo, he goeth out into the, unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink. Against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand, and thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldst not hear. Time and time again. Moses and Aaron will go, and do as the Lord has commanded telling Pharaoh to let their people go. So thus saith the Lord in verse 17, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. Smiting the river. Making the most powerful thing in Egypt the river, 
the source of water, the source, the Nile River, the source of life, turning that unto blood as a sign to Pharaoh that God is in control and not Pharaoh and that God's people must be let go. We go to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, and verse 48. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. This is a fire. It is something that God has done for a sign to the world. It is something that God does over. He shows the world who he is. And the world ignores it at their peril. Going back to chapter 7. In verse 18, the river, in verse 17, they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers upon their ponds, upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. It's not going to matter where the water is. God is going to strike it and change it to blood, that the Egyptians will not drink of it, and this plague, this plague shall continue. If we go to Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. That's when they cross the Red Sea. Another miracle. But here in verse 20 of Exodus 7, And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Have you ever driven by the shore where the fish have died and are on the land, and you're by the shore of the water, and the fish have been there in the mud on the shore. The fish have died. Ever smell that stink? Quite the stink. This is throughout all the land of Egypt, the Nile and beyond. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. He did not listen to Moses. He did not listen to Aaron. He did not listen to God. His magicians said, ah, that's nothing big. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. He wasn't concerned. 
And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. They were hoping to find clean water coming up. They were digging small wells out to see if they could find clean water. Verse 25, and seven days were fulfilled. After that, the Lord had smitten the river. The Lord, the water was, was blood, and it lasted for seven days. People were looking to gain water to drink. And in chapter 8, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. The fish are dead. River was blood for a week. The water was bad. It all turned to blood. And now there is going to be a plague of frogs everywhere. If we go on to chapter 9 and verse 2. Here again. For if thou refuse to let them go, and withhold them still, warning after warning, time after time, and Pharaoh still would not listen to Moses and Aaron, to what God would have them to do, what God would have the Hebrews to do, where he would have them to go. Now, if we go to Revelation chapter 16, Revelation chapter 16 and verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to do the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Think on that. The Egyptians, the magicians, the sorcerers tried to duplicate what God had done through Moses and Aaron to make it seem as though it were nothing. And yet, it was not them that was doing it. It was not them. Smite them with frogs. In verse 3, And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants upon thy, and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs. Your food. There's going to be frogs in your food. They're going to be in your bed. They're going to be under this. They're, they're everywhere. You'll not escape them for the number of them. I mean, I don't know how many of you have had a pest in the house. Hopefully not many, but if you have, you know how bad that can be. Now multiply that throughout the whole house, being overrun by frogs your food source, your supplies, everything, frogs, frogs everywhere. 
We go to the book of Psalms, chapter 105. Psalms 105, and verse 30. In Psalms 105 and verse 30. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. Everywhere. From the Pharaoh's house to the lowliest Egyptian. Frogs everywhere. In verse 4. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. Everywhere frogs. Everywhere. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Going back to Psalms chapter 78. Psalm 78. And verse 45. Psalm 78 and verse 45. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. The plagues of Egypt being recounted once more. And in verse 7 of chapter 8, And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. All right, now he's wearing down. Now Pharaoh is beginning to come to his senses. He is coming and saying, Moses, Go speak to God on my behalf that these frogs, take away the frogs, take away this plague, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice unto God. Go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts, chapter 8. Acts, chapter 8, and verse 24. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. It's the same principle from Moses and Pharaoh asking Moses to pray to God to take away the things take away the frogs, take away the plague. Well, now this Simon is speaking to Peter because Peter had told him of his sin and his wickedness and told him what would become of him because of it. So then answered Simon and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken of come upon me. Well, thanks be to God that we don't need an intercessor save Christ. That we as Christians, we who know Jesus Christ as our Savior can go straight to God asking that which is necessary. Asking that which we need, we, we truly need and want that a plague be lifted, healing be, be had, 
that he gets us through whatever it is we're going through. Those who know Christ can go straight to God and don't need someone else to do so. And that is a glorious blessing. And in verse 9 of chapter 8 of Exodus, And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. His magicians couldn't do it. They couldn't take the plague away. And Moses was very pointed. He said, Be it according to thy word, you set the term. You've made it known what will happen and when that you may know that it's God. Then there is none like the Lord our God. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 26. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. There is none like God, who can and will do for his people. We go to Psalm chapter 86. Psalm chapter 86 and verse 8. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. There's no one like God. And none can do works like God. They can imitate, but never equal. We go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. In verse 6, Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 6. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might, who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations. And in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee. No one can equal God. No one can do the things that God will do or can do. He created the universe. So we're going back to Exodus chapter 8 and verse 11. And the frog shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs, which he had brought against Pharaoh. All of these things. All of these things. He had done. So Moses asked him, take the frogs away. In verse 13, And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields, and they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. They gathered them together. They died where they were. They gathered them. They cleaned them, they cleaned them up and put them in heaps. And the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. The minute the plague was over, the minute they had cleaned up, even though there was a stench, 
Pharaoh hardened his heart once more and would not let God's people go, as he had said. And the Lord said unto Moses in verse 16, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. If nothing, it wasn't enough. The frogs weren't enough. The lice weren't. Nothing. The blood wasn't enough. The lack of water. And now he's bringing lice upon all the land of Egypt. We go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. And verse 31. Psalm 105 and verse 31. He spake, and there came diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. But here's the lice. God spoke it. Not Aaron, not Moses. God spoke it. Moses and Aaron did as they were told. And here comes the lice. So in verse 18 of Exodus 8, And the magicians did so with their enchantments, enchantments to bring forth lice. But they could not. They couldn't duplicate this so there were lice upon man and upon beast then the magician said unto pharaoh this is the finger of god and pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the lord had said even his own magicians are saying this is god working we can't imitate this we can't do according to it. We can't do anything about it. The magicians have finally realized that they're up against God himself. And these magicians have nothing that they can do. If we go to Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. These magicians, these sorcerers, they're trying to duplicate what God had done. They're trying to undo what God had done to no avail. The devil beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 8. Starting in verse 8. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Here in Second Timothy, these magicians of Pharaoh are named. They withstood Moses. So they thought. But their folly was manifest, because they couldn't do anything about these plagues. They might be able to duplicate some of the early ones. But they were powerless against God, and they finally knew they were up against God. And they admitted it to Pharaoh. And in verse 20 of chapter 8, 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Let my people go, that they may serve thee. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. God is showing Pharaoh, he is showing the Egyptians, I'll make this curse upon you, and my people will have none of it. My people will have none of it. And if we go on to chapter 9 and verse 4, And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is of the that is the children's of Israel. And in chapter nine again, verse six. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And if we go on again to verse twenty six of chapter nine, and we'll review this again next week. Chapter 26, verse 26 of chapter 9. Only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Egypt getting smitten by all these plagues. Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there, God, these are my people. Nothing's going to happen to them. It's happening all to you because you won't let my people go and serve me. Severed. So in verse 23, again, And I will put a division between my people and thy people tomorrow. This shall this sign be. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. There, was, there were so many flies. Everything was corrupted. Never, a swarm of flies all over your food. The worst picnic ever. In your house, constantly at you, constantly in your way, flies everywhere. Pharaoh's house, his servant's house, his people's houses, but not, not in the houses of the children of Israel. If we go to Psalm chapter 78. Psalm chapter 78. Psalm chapter 78 and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded their fathers, that they should make known, make them known to their children. Everything, everything that God had commanded, everything would be recounted from generation to generation. And in 78 verse 45, it's being recounted the flies. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. All of these things coming together. 
all of these great things. And these people are not. Still Pharaoh is not listening. He's not understanding. So verse 25, And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet to do so, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. And lo, lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? The Egyptians would not understand the sacrifice of God. They wouldn't. They, this, this was absolute against what the Egyptians wanted or would do, the Egyptian people. We go back to Genesis 43. Genesis 43 and verse 32. Genesis chapter 43 and verse 32. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Even in Joseph's day, in Joseph's own house, they did not want to see the sacrifice or eat with the Hebrews. And if we go on to chapter 46 of Genesis and verse 34, Chapter 46. That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth, even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. Why? Why were they saying cattle? For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And what would the sacrifice to the Lord be in the land? Lambs, sheep. Said, shall we, lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? Won't they kill us just for this? So in verse 27 of chapter 8, we will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. I'll let you go, but only so far, to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But take away this plague. Take away this last, you know, talk to God for me again. Entreat God that this plague be taken away. Go to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13 and verse 6. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. Kings who have done against God's will, who have done evil in the sight of the Lord, being punished, and the man of God being asked, pray to God for me. Get me out of this mess with God. Entreat for me. In verse 29, And Moses said, Behold, 
I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. We've been through this before. We've gone down this road before. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. He went, he prayed, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. The flies were gone. And what happened again? And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. And this is what a hardened heart will do. Even people of this very day, God may show them a wonder. How many people, how many people have come? Pray for my family, pray for my brother, pray for my father, pray for my son, my daughter, that they might not be taken from me by evil disease, that they might be able to walk, that they might be able Ask God to do a great work. How many times does this happen? Even today. And people do not listen. They do not know. They, 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 they want God to just do what they would have him to do for them. But they don't want to come to him to know Christ as their Savior, to know God as their Father in heaven as those who know Christ do. A hardened heart. Those people who have a hardened heart and do not do as God would have them to do to come to salvation through Jesus Christ. If there's any out there who does not yet know Christ as their Savior, I pray that your heart will no longer be hard, that your eyes and ears are open to the Word, and that you will come to know Christ as your Savior, which is, in fact, your only hope in this world and the next. We will see of hardened hearts next week once more. Thank you and good night.